probably ran out of storage. Deep learning, deep learning based shaders, AI based shaders. That's the answer to the problem here. Teach, teach the AI how to, how to replicate reality, make things look real, and then use the AI to generate the simulated reality. So all you have to do is give it enough, enough uh, input, enough data. Just leave a camera sitting in front of something for a long period of time and feed it into your deep learning system. And eventually it'll figure out how everything's working inside of that scene. thing with deep learning is, is the only time it's you can deep learn something is, is when you've got a lot of data. You're not going to be able to use deep learning to, say, create new works by Beethoven. You'll be able to translate a chord progression with a set of notes into something Beethoven might do. But you're not going to uh, get created works by Beethoven because um, there just isn't enough data for that. You may be able to direct it a little bit. You may be able to give a lot of different kind of people's different works and and then give the AI the freedom to uh, come up with a, a song and then add whatever seems suitable for the um, for the notation. That's the reason why uh, GarageBand, the only AI thing they've got in it right now is just the drummer. Because drummers repeat. They repeat the same rhythm over and over again. That's, that's perfect for deep learning. Anything that repeats a lot. And anything where there's a lot of data is, is good for deep learning. Otherwise, it's, it's not. That's what I've read. I'm reading a book on deep learning. With it, the way they describe it is, is that um, what you're doing is you're creating a function. And uh, there are different ways to represent the functional part, the, the function itself. And one of them is, is it, as a neural net. And what the neural net is, is it's a bunch of these sub-functions that are, that are um, connecting to each other. And it's trying to it's trying to turn the input into the output um, um, by figuring out what kind of functions need to go in between the input and the output. Um, it takes in a lot of data and then it tries to learn that data. And by learning it, what it's doing is it's trying to it's trying to reproduce the same outputs given the same inputs in the data and uh, to do that it's it's doing some it's doing some complex um, curve fitting it's multi-dimensional curve fitting type thing and uh, when the inputs come in um, or what the machine the machine learning area is is that you just start using um, a basic set of neurons that are that are just taking in like three inputs and producing one output and then you um, use some sort of algorithm to generate how those neurons are going to how if you need more neurons to make more detail on some input um, and then you just um, like parent the neurons to existing neurons in the, in the uh, so what you're doing is you're basically um, giving giving the um, you're giving an algorithm a, a, a method of coming up with a function that takes in a certain amount of inputs and produces a certain amount of outputs based upon a lot of data that you're feeding 
the algorithm and uh, that that neural net that's generated is called a model and when it's full you know it's fully learned whenever um, any inputs you try produce correct outputs and then you can go ahead and use it out on the field I guess but um, the magic is what they say the magic is is coming up with the algorithms or the methods of, of training the uh, the model of coming up with the, the neural nets and the neural nets are just a, are the neurons are just a bunch of functions so they're each neurons a function and um, you're connecting functions together is what you're doing and um, they're, they're the outputs they're producing are going into the inputs of other functions and they're all um, basically neurons and so evidently this is how your brain works is that your brain uh, each neuron in your brain is just a function and it takes inputs and it generates outputs and uh, and some of those outputs go to the input of other neurons and uh, when it gets stimuli the uh, it um, sends it through the model and out comes the output that it then makes use of some in some form or another it um, and I'm watching documentaries about aut people with autism saying that the, it's very hard for someone who's autistic to recognize when it's raining because what they have to do is they have to put the pieces of the puzzle together they, they see rain they see some some sort of refractive property on the on the glass they may go outside and put their hand out and see if they feel something cold against their hands and then they have to look into their memory which um, is hard to discern what happened a long time ago and something that happened just now and from that information they're able to determine uh, if it if it in fact is raining and then you know so if you see an autistic person yelling whenever it rains, what they're doing is they're overwhelmed by the stimulus and they don't know how to explain what it is that they're seeing. And eventually they come to the realization that it's raining outside. And the documentary I saw said uh, also showed that autistic people can talk, but they just can't use the verbal communication. They have to use stuff like keyboards. I know somebody in Alt Space VR. I'm trying to remember his name, um, but he's an interesting guy to talk to. And uh, if he talks to you through audio, you can't understand him because he repeats a lot of words and he says stuff over and over again. And but when when you type to him, you message him, you know, he's he's perfectly understandable, you know. And he says that that's just, it, it's a challenge to communicate verbally. So.